so you can go to the Thank you. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. These old wars get old. These old wars get old. I don't know, but they tell me. I don't know, but they tell me. There is war, as far as I see. There is war, as far as I see. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Are we weak or strong? We're strong. These are all required. Yep, every single one of them. Uh -huh. So I. <laughs> Take this. Somebody take this. I got it. I got it. You got it? <laughs> All right. If they tell you to go, if they, they tell, tell you to go, go, there is something you should know. There, there is something you should know. They wave the flag when you attack. They wave the flag when you attack. When you come home, they turn their back. When you come home, they turn their back. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Are we weak or strong? We're, We're strong. strong. Sound of one, two.
Hey, Ken's got it memorized over here. He's the smart one. Uh, he, made, he made me. to the American soldiers who fought World War I, the war to end all war. But they called it hell on earth. More than their bonuses, these soldiers wanted peace. They gathered in Washington in 1932 to demand payment of their bonus. But they were met with violence in their own nation's capital just for trying to claim what was rightfully theirs. <clears throat> I am president of Veterans for Peace. This is Bab talking for Barry. A national organization of military veterans with a visceral understanding of war and its causes. We have come to believe in nonviolence as a more effective and humane response to conflict. In 1967, Martin Luther King said prophetically, a nation that continues year after year to spend money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual doom. I'm going to read that again. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual doom. We got to think about that because we're close. <clears throat> I wish to convey our serious opposition to your administration's policy of increasing the military budget while decreasing and even eliminating funding for vital social services. As veterans, we have long recognized, recognized that increases to an already bloated Pentagon budget are what keep us in the business of war. We in Veterans for Peace are not fooled into thinking that this budget makes our country any safer. Marine General Smedley Butler, two times Regional Medal of Honor recipient, pronounced, war is a racket. We believe that, and we are sick of it. 
Butler's sentiment is still resonant today in the words of our own Matt Ho, who you heard speak at, at the Lincoln Memorial. A former State Department official and Marine captain, the killing, the organized murder we engaged in, benefited only the profits of the defense corporations, the salaries of retired generals, and the terrorist groups themselves. We speak for the majority of United States citizens who believe that your policies, President Donald Trump, are taking innocent lives and endangering more of our young soldiers who have already given so much in the needless wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. I don't know. Now we have sent more Marines into Syria. Your policies are also causing suffering and despair among immigrants, Muslims, communities of color, women, Native Americans, and LGBTQ communities. And if implemented, these policies will further destroy the environment. Ultimately, they make all of us less secure. Since these policies do nothing to promote human or planetary betterment, we are left to conclude that they are intended to maintain and advance what has sadly become the global U.S. empire, an empire that, like all empires of the past, exploits and oppresses other nations and the earth itself in order to increase the wealth and power of the very few. Meanwhile, common people's lives become more and more impoverished. We are now requesting that a delegation from Veterans for Peace be invited to meet with you in person to speak about your policies and how they affect peace at home and abroad with independent media present, like the bonus marches of the 1930s. We demand our bonus, the bonus for our service and the many sacrifices of our comrades is peace. Most sincerely yours, Barry Langdorf, President, Veterans for Peace. Call the Berrigan brothers because they're such models for us. Rested here many times. Uh, there are three of them. I would ask you to say presente. Okay. Dan Berrigan. Presente. Phil Berrigan. Presente. Jerry Berrigan. Presente. Now Dan uh, was a patron and a prophet to me. And when I read his autobiography, I had a new insight into why I was doing what I was doing. After the Catonsville Nine, uh, after he had poured napalm with eight others on draft cards and burned them in front of the uh, federal building in Catonsville, uh, they wrapped them up, of course, and he was sitting in the only federal building there, the post office. And the way that he describes it in his memoir is really, really terrific. So we're all sitting around there, and I'm thinking to myself, Dan, this is a big deal. You did a big thing here. Now, people are going to call you a communist. They're going to call you deranged. They're going to call you all kinds of names. Was it worth it? And he said, it took me a while to come to the realization that, yeah, it really is true. The good is worth doing because it's good. Okay? Now results, success, not unimportant, but secondary. The goodness of the act speaks for itself. And Dan said, wow, that gave me some kind of consolation, made me feel a lot less crazy. Maybe it could make us feel a lot less crazy here because the good really is worth doing because it's good. Violence, oppression is worth opposing because it's wrong. Now, at the end of this little uh, soliloquy, uh, Dan writes, and just then, now Dan is a po poet as well as other things, he says, just then, you know, in comes a paradigm of an FBI inspector. 
And he looks around the room, and he sees my brother Phil, who, like Dan, was a priest. He was in his clerics, and he looked at Phil, and he said, You again! I'm going to change my religion! <laughs> and Dan adds in the next line, No higher compliment could ever come from my brother Phil. <laughs> what am I saying here? I'm saying here that uh, you can do very serious things. You can wonder whether what you're doing is serious or, or, or whether it's faithful. Not useful or successful, but faithful. But you have to do it in community, and you have to do it by keeping your sense of humor. Okay? Now, Dan Berrigan was famous for this. Uh, he had this winsome smile, and last time I saw him at Fordham University, about two years before he died, I told him, Dan, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go over to Moscow and I'm going to see Ed Snowden. Do you have any words for him? And Dan looked at me and he kind of winced and he said, Yeah. He, just, he had a raspy voice toward the end. He said, Yeah, you tell him, tell him he did the right thing. <laughs> I said, I will. And then I said, Now I was talking to uh, Dan, uh, Dan Ellsberg this week because we were talking about Moscow and. And he said, if you see Dan Berrigan, say hello. So, do you have some words for, for Dan Ellsberg? And he thought for a second, and he, he looked at me, and he says, Yeah, tell him he did the right thing, too. <laughs> okay? So, let's remember that people, prophets like Dan and, and Phil and Jerry Berrigan, kind of looking down at us now, or wherever they are, I don't know, but I think they're all looking at us and saying, you guys are doing the right thing, okay? Barack Obama and his then Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, came up with this idea to move 60% of U.S. military forces into the Asia Pacific. For what? To encircle China and Russia. People often don't think that just bordering North Korea, not only is China, but also Russia, Vladivostok, that during the Korean War, MacArthur took U.S. planes and flew them over the border and bombed Vladivostok, Russia, trying to draw Russia into the Korean War, but they didn't take the bait. So the U.S. has been trying for a long time for regime change in both those two countries. And so the pivot is all about that. But you can't sell that pivot and the huge expense to the American people and the people of the world unless you have a demon, right? And so they've been working hard to create demons in the Asia Pacific. On one hand, they use North Korea, a little pipsqueak country not with much capability that would make the Americans afraid. In fact, I remember a few years ago, North Korea launched one of its missiles, and I read about it in one of the space industry publications. They were interviewing some American GIs. They were in charge of tracking that missile during its flight, and they were laughing at North Korea. They were making fun of North Korea, saying they don't have the space satellites the space assets, as they call them, to even track their own rockets. They're no problem for us. And it was then that I realized that this whole thing is a show. And that it's a show aimed at frightening and demonizing and creating the illusion of danger when, in fact, the danger is really coming from right there, the White House. And because of this pivot, now the U.S. military needs more airfields for its warplanes that are being sent to the Asia Pacific. They need more ports of call for the warships. They need more barracks for the U.S. soldiers. And so in places like Darwin, Australia, and Northern Australia, new barracks are being built for U.S. Marines that are being sent to the region. And in Okinawa, in Aura Bay, they're building a twin runway out into the bay, over the water. And they're going to dump 
millions of dump truck loads of landfill into the bay where there's coral and endangered sea mammals, dugongs. Only a couple of them left in order to build more runways for the U.S. pivot. And then in places like Jeju Island, Korea, a 500-year-old fishing, fishing and farming village called Kangjong Village, 2,000 residents, people that have for 500 years have worshipped nature in their community, torn apart to build a Navy base for U.S. warships that are built in my hometown of Bath, Maine at Bath Ironworks. It's absolutely sick, and it's evil, and it's coming out of this place right here. So it's so good that we're standing here today. And now on top of all that, the recent U.S. decision to deploy the THAAD, the THAAD missile, so-called missile defense system, that has nothing to do with defense. It's part of U.S. first strike attack planning. Missile defenses after you launch a first strike, when they try to fire retaliatory capability, you take them out with your so-called missile defense system. And so this THAAD system is now going into a little community, a melon farming village in South Korea called Songju. And you know, the people have been out in the streets in recent months by the millions repeatedly in South Korea, toppled their corrupt right-wing government, puppet government. And before a new election could be held, the U.S. rushed the THAAD deployments into Korea. But I just read yesterday that the new President Moon is now calling for an investigation of the entire process that brought that on. So maybe, just maybe, maybe in South Korea there might be a new president who just might have the courage to stand up to the people inside of this so-called White House here. You know, one of our friends, Regis Tremley, some of you might know him, a filmmaker, his son today, today is in Ukraine, Western Ukraine. He's a sniper, and he's training, along with others from Fort Carson, Special Forces troops from Fort Carson, Colorado. They're training the Nazis that have been brought into the National Guard in, in Ukraine, in Western Ukraine. And after their training, they're then sent to Eastern Ukraine, where their job is to attack the civilians in what's called the Donbass, right along the Russian border. And they've killed thousands and thousands of people, shelling homes, schools, hospitals, daycare centers, churches, all kinds of places on behalf of the U.S. NATO war machine. So our job is to stand in solidarity with all these people around the world. That's what we're doing today. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for everything you do every single day. Keep it going. Keep it going.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And God bless all of you. Peace. Peace abroad.